what you are looking at right now are not real images, they're not real paintings or drawings, they are all AI generated, which is really impressive when you look closely at these and notice how well they're generated. And what you also might notice is that below each of these, there's a little bit of text. So for example, for this fox, there is a painting of a fox in the style of Starry Night. Or you have a crayon drawing of a space elevator. So what you're seeing here is a model very similar to OpenAI's DALI, which takes text and from that text can gener generate an image except for as opposed to uh, in comparison to DALI, this is, as you can see, quite a bit better. And on top of that, it uses four times less parameters, which puts it, which puts this model still at about 3 billion parameters, but better than DALI's 12 billion, I guess, right? <laughs> So this model is called Glide, and this is a model that was released just a few days ago by OpenAI, and it is for, as you might have noticed, image generation. So what I want to talk about today are a few things. One, I want to go over sort of what this model is, very briefly how it works, but then more importantly, I want to go over how we can use it to generate these sorts of images and go over some examples because it's always fun to go over some examples with these image-based papers. And then finally, I want to wrap it up at the end of the video by trying to generate a new profile picture for my channel because I really need to update mine. So we'll see if this can do a good job. And if it does, then we'll be hopefully replacing my profile picture. So to get started, uh, let's briefly talk about what this model is, how it works. So as opposed to DALI, which used a mix of clip and autoencoders and visual codebooks and that sort of thing, what Glide does is it uses what's called a diffusion model. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this, but if you are interested, you can check out this Google AI blog post, which I will definitely be uh, linking in the description. And it talks all about how these diffusion models work. Essentially, you start with some low res image. So here's an example they give, right? So you have I think it's Jeffrey Hinton, right? Um, and they add a bunch of noise to it. And then they have a model predict what the image was like without the noise. You go step by step, right? So you add some noise, you add some more noise, you add some more noise, and then you back it up and predict each step. And you get some really, really great results. As you can see, you have the input on the left, and then you have the output on the right as it's learning to denoise the image. So very great results here. Uh, they have some more details here. Nothing we're going to go into right now. I really want to jump into some examples and how you can generate your own images because I think this is really cool. So let's jump over to this next notebook I have right here. So this is the text to image notebook. And this is very similar to the original code that OpenAI released on GitHub. They released two notebooks. One thing I should have mentioned, right? Why two notebooks? Well, one of them does this normal image generation, but it can even do more than this. They can also do in painting if we go down here. So what in painting is, is you essentially point out a portion of an image that you want to sort of crop out, and then you want to replace it uh, with something else. So for example, here, you can see on the left, they started out with this giant field, uh, just an empty field, and then they cropped out this green portion and added the text zebras roaming in the field. And then you can see that the model in painted these zebras. So the same thing here, changing this dog to a, a corgi. I think that people at OpenAI really like corgis, I can't complain, um, or making this person's hair red and all sorts of things. And you can see you get really realistic results. So they have two notebooks, one for each of these tasks. Uh, and you can find them on this GitHub repository. Again, will be linked in the description. One person, I found this on Reddit though, took these and they turned them into an interactive collab, which means we can adjust model parameters and stuff very easily. So credit to them. I don't know how to pronounce their name, but I'll, I'll link their uh, GitHub link in the, in the description. So this is their notebook. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and start, I guess. So the first thing we want to do, by the way, is change your, make sure you change your runtime. If it's not already changed to a GPU, we'll definitely want to be using GPU speedups for this, or it will take a while. And we're just going to go ahead and run each of these things. Now I've already uh, run some of these, or I've already run most of these things. So it's already downloaded these certain things and it's already chosen a device. And this is just taking up, uh, essentially downloading the model. Now that does take uh, a few minutes the first time you run it, so I'm not going to run it again right now, but just note that the first time you run this, it might take four or five minutes to get that started up. Once we have that though, what we can do is come down here and you can see we have a heading that says sample a 64 by 64 resolution. So why 64 by 64? These look like a lot higher resolution, right? And yes, so what this model actually does is we start by generating a 64 by 64 image. And then once we have it, we upsample it to 256 by 256. That way the sort of generative portion of the model that takes a lot of compute power can work pretty quickly in a 64 by 64 resolution. 
And then I, I believe the up, upscaling does not take as much computation power. Something along those lines. I, I might not be explaining this exactly. Uh, computer vision is not my area of specialty, but that's the general idea. So what you can see is we can put in a prompt here. So the default is an oil painting of a corgi. Again, they must really love corgis, can't complain. Uh, the batch size, which this is how many of these images you want to produce. Uh, guidance, I believe, is how strictly uh, you want to produce this prompt. So it's essentially a trade-off between variety and like uh, quality, you could say. And the upsampling temperature, uh, I, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I think if we expand this, it should show us. Let's see. Ah, uh, so it controls the sharpness, but when it's too high, it may lead to grainy artifacts. Cool. So you can double click on this and see all the code if you want. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. So let, let's just, I guess, start with an oil painting of a corgi and then we can try something else. So note that I, there, there's two things I want to mention. One, I'm using the, the upgraded version of Collab, so this might take like a minute per image for you if you're not using the upgraded version. And two, this is actually a smaller, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's, let's start upsampling that so we can next run this to upsample it. Um, next is this actually isn't the full size glide model. The full size glide model, as I mentioned, is 3 billion parameters. This is a downscaled version that's just 300 uh, million parameters, just 300 million, still quite a bit. 300 million parameters that OpenAI uh, has released and it doesn't allow you to generate human like objects. They did some filtering on the data set, but it's still pretty good. As you can see, this is, this is quite a good image. Eden from the future here, just wanted to cut in for one second and say if you do enjoy this sort of ML content, do consider subscribing to the channel. I do a whole lot of stuff like this and I really appreciate every one of you that subscribes. Back to the video. So, so let's try something else. Let's try like, uh, again, we can't do human, so maybe we can do, uh, I don't know, a stick figure jumping. <laughs> Keep it very simple here. Uh, so hopefully that this shouldn't be too hard for it, though we'll see. I did try and generate some humans, and unfortunately it does a pretty good job of stopping you. I, was, <laughs> I thought it would have been funny. Um, so let's see. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I've seen this happen before. For some reason, every time you try and generate stick figures, <laughs> this is so good. As you might notice, it doesn't generate a stick figure. It generates a literal stick that kind of looks like a stick figure. It is It is in the air almost, I think, right? It looks like it's kind of, anyway, <laughs> incredible stuff. So I want to take this to the next level though. Instead of just generating a couple things, what I want to do is I want to go from start to finish to completely AI generated images, right? So we're still providing the prompt. What we can do though is even beyond this, I want to have the prompts be AI generated too. Uh, AI generated too. So the way we can do this is go to the OpenAI Playground. And what I've actually done is I've already set this up beforehand. So if I hit AI image prompts right here, this is essentially a model that will generate text. It's a text generation model. It's a GPT-3 based model. And I set up this prompt that says 100 interesting example prompts for AI generated images. So I get it started with a few examples, an oil painting of a corgi, a Pokemon that looks oddly like a human. This probably wouldn't work because I just remembered, right? The model tries to filter out this human stuff. And then a brilliant purple galaxy. So what we can do now is we can have it generate some more examples here. So if we do this, you can say a black hole, a well-lit beach at dusk. It has a bunch of examples. So this is really neat. We can essentially take these now, take these AI generated examples, and so let's copy these. And if we come over here to, this is, oh, I need to run this. I should have done this beforehand, my bad. Oh, oh no, oh gosh. Um, okay, so th this is actually gonna take a bit to run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, sort of show you how it works. This is a notebook I set up very similar to the notebook that OpenAI provides, except for it's for generating images in batches. So where is it? Where do we put in the prompts? Ah, oh, yes. So I've adjusted this so that essentially we can just put in our prompts right here, and then it will generate all of these one at a time and save them to a Google Drive, uh, because in case like the, the collab gets disconnected or something, right? So the idea is that we're going to AI generate a bunch of these prompts, and then we are going to mass generate images from them, and then we're gonna take a look at those images. So instead of using these that we just generated right here though, I actually ahead of time went and generated a bunch of these so that we don't have to wait for them to generate. It can take a very long time. Uh, so if we actually come down here, we go to AI complete, oh, let's see, AI complete image prompts. Yeah. So these are all the ones I generated. Um, as you can see, it's not quite a hundred examples. It's more like 20 or so. So let's just look at some of the things we got. We got 
uh, a giant mushroom, a beautiful sunny day, a good dog. These are pretty simple, right? What I did though is that as we go, or as these were generated, I actually bumped up the temperature parameter right here on the right. And what that does is it makes the answers more, or the generations more like wild, you could say, or more random. So as you can see, as we go down, we get some more strange things like a kingdom of bricks, okay, an alien creature. Um, and then we end up with some really crazy stuff towards the end, like, you know, Elon Musk holding a severed unicorn head. <laughs> you know, gotta love it. Uh, Oh, GPT-3 really has a good sense of humor, a photo of a koala on a skateboard, an alien posing for a picture in front of a UFO, some good stuff here. So what I did was I copied all these, uh, I copied all these, I pasted them in this batch generation thing that you just saw a bit ago, and I generated. And when we generate, we get, uh, as you might expect, images. I, as I mentioned, I've done this ahead of time so that we can look at these together and not have to wait for them to generate. And don't worry, I haven't actually looked at them ahead of time. I very briefly looked at one or two just to make sure it was working. But as you can see, I have a tab open right here that has all the generated images, so I'm very excited to see these. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what Glide generated us. Okay. <laughs> There's definitely some cursed images here. Let's go one by one. So here we got an alien posing... This is the alien posing in front of a UFO. Not too accurate. Okay, maybe it didn't have meant much. Oh, you know what? I wonder if they sampled out aliens because they looked like humans from the data set. Hmm, maybe. A cat. What's it? A cat with two extra eyeballs, I think, was one of the prompts. I think. <laughs> is that an eyeball right there? Can you. Can you is that visible? Let's, yeah, zooming in doesn't really work. We have a koala. Oh, this must be the koala on a skateboard. This is very interesting. It's a, a picture of a koala <laughs> on on, I don't know what this is, like a coaster? <laughs> but I can tell it's a koala at least, right? What's, what's is it a ram? Elon, oh, this is the Elon Musk holding like a, a some, like a, a deer head or something? <laughs> oh, what a shame, this didn't turn out, this is, this is a cursed image right here. Didn't turn out as well as I was hoping, but okay. You got a soldier, what's this? Soldier wearing a nice beret was one of them, I believe. That's definitely not a soldier. I guess, again, human Im images don't work. An alien creature. This definitely does look like an... <laughs> this looks more like a squid to me, but I, I can see the alien in this. I guess it can't do a humanoid alien, so it did a squid alien. Kind of neat. An interesting bird. I don't know. Would you guys call this interesting? <laughs> it's, it's a long bird. A perfect hamburger. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> I'm not sure I would eat this if I saw this. Um, a giant mushroom. Okay, good enough. Oil painting of a corgi, good enough. Uh, yeah, so there's some good stuff in here. Oh, this is this is another one. I generated this one when I was doing some testing, and so I have seen this one, but it's hilarious. This is this is the stick man, a stick man hiking. <laughs> so you can actually see it really gets the stick man quite well here. Um, is it hiking? I guess so. It's on the grass. Uh, so <laughs> you know th this works. Okay, a brilliant purple galaxy. This is pretty good, actually. I haven't seen this one. Oh, that looks really nice. Okay, so, so you know, it's okay, I guess. If you can tune the image, or if you can do the prompts pretty well, and again, you can generate a bunch of these and then just choose the best one. So, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this. I think it's pretty good. Um, so the next thing I did, right, is I said... My profile, my profile picture on YouTube is actually very outdated. It's still from when I have my old channel name, and I need a new one. So I went back to this OpenAI Playground, and instead of this these prompts, I, I added a new prompt. So what you'll see is AI, here we go. So I added this new prompt for because I wanted to try and generate profile pictures, but I, I didn't really know what to do for a profile picture because I don't know what a good idea would be. So I put in this prompt, OpenAI trained a model to generate images from text, the model, blah, 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 blah. It's just talking about this model. So what I say is, so to generate the profile uh, picture, 100 text prompts related to AI, ML, RL, and NLP, some of the primary things I talk about on this channel, uh, those types of prompts were generated. And then you can see these, except for the first few, these are almost all things that the AI generate. So there's some of these that are, you know, drawn attractive human-like robot face. Okay. I guess human-like stuff doesn't work again. So that's, again, going to be a downfall here. But an, an image of an AI professor in a classroom, a futuristic face. Yeah, lots of these faces and human-based things. A web of technology. Okay. A close-up of a neon brain. That's neat. Uh, future AACs. Oh, it's aesthetic. Oh. 
<laughs> can't read a future aesthetic with an orbital background. That's cool. That sounds cool, but will it actually generate good things? So I did the same thing here. I took all these and I threw them into the notebook you saw earlier and I generated a bunch of profile pictures that I have not yet seen. I took, again, I checked a few of them just to make sure they were generating, uh, but the rest I haven't seen. So let's take a look at what we got from this. Let's, let's see. Okay. Okay. Already this looks like quite the mix. I see some like is this Russian almost I, or English? I don't know. Uh, it is generating letters though. That's interesting. Uh, here it looks like we have a Venn, not a, not a Venn diagram, just some sort of diagram and architecturally inspired something, a photo of someone who looks like they could be the founder or CEO of Google. <laughs> I guess again, it can't do, uh, we'll just skip the human images uh, because those, those didn't work out too well. Let's see an abstract photo that looks realistic due to something. Okay. This actually looks pretty cool. What's this? This is supposed to be a crude abstract image of the solar system. Hmm. I'm not sure that's a solar system, but I guess we have like space in the sun. Maybe I guess it, I guess it is supposed to be abstract, right? So maybe that's not too bad. Uh, oh, this is a good cat picture. Really grainy picture that is still visually pleasing. Oh, that's visually pleasing. I can say that much. <laughs> uh, whoa, this looks like a real hand, like, like a hand drawn, like pencil drawn thing, a drawing of a head with a machine inside of it. Oh. A portrait of Elon Musk. <laughs> it took Elon Musk to mean a, a must, a must, like a, <laughs> okay, this is hilarious. <laughs> this is pretty good. Uh, maybe that should, maybe this should be my new profile picture and I should just rename my channel to Elon Musk. Huh. Uh, what else? Is, let's go through these a little bit faster. There should be a hundred here. Oh, whoa, a web of technology. So we just got a web. Okay. Oh, stars in space that look synthetic. Interesting. This is, I guess, a planet. What the heck is this? Hmm. I think we're almost to the end of these. I'm not sure I see anything that's profile picture worthy yet. But, uh, oh, dang, that's the end. Wait, 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 what's this? A futuristic blue clip art robot. <laughs> Just looks like it has a butt on its head. <laughs> I guess it looks kind of robotic. I'm not sure I'd call this futuristic though. Oh, is this like a, so it's like a butt and then it's inserting like a disc into it. This looks old school if, I, if nothing else. I, <laughs> should this be my profile picture, my new profile picture? If <laughs> if you want this to be my new profile picture, let me know in the, uh, in the comments. And we also have a photo of a robot face. This actually, I kind of like the design here though. It's not very crisp, I must say. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of these, unfortunately. I'm not sure if there's anything profile picture worthy, except for maybe the Elon Musk one or the, the future, futuristic robot. So I did do one more thing in case this didn't work. Luckily I have one backup plan and that was, I generated, um, hundreds of more, uh, images and only took a few of the best ones, except for, I didn't use AI generated prompts. I just used prompts I came up with. Um, and generated the same thing, but many, many, many batches. So I think I generated probably around three, 400 images. Um, and I took, I think the top five I like. So let's take a look at those. I have them right here. Um, so what I want to do with this video is if you like any of these profile picks, let me know in the comments and we can sort of have a vote. And if we get enough votes, uh, I'll, I'll choose whatever profile picture gets the most votes. So here we have number one. So if you like this one, this is, this is supposed to be like a brain, I think, right? It's low res, but uh, if, if this does get chosen, I'll just, I'll take it into Photoshop or something and, and upgrade a little bit, maybe add on to it. So think of this as more of the base of the profile picture. I do like this sort of structure it has here and the, the lighting is really cool. So let's look at the next one. So profile picture two, I honestly have no, this one's small. I don't know what this is supposed to be. It looks, I thought it was like a pig nose at first, but it sort of has like a mouth here and it has a reflection, which I, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I'm not sure if this represents my channel, but it was kind of cool. Um, picture three, I have no clue what this one's supposed to be, but we got some interesting colors here and an interesting pattern, you know, cool enough. Uh, picture four, uh, <laughs> I thought this one was kind of cute. It looks like, like a slime almost. I don't know. I thought it was cute, so I, I took it. Um, and then the last one is picture five. This one might, might actually be my favorite. I think it's supposed to be, it looks almost like an eyeball or like something, right? Cause you have this, this really cool pattern in the center, but then you have this green part out here. This might be my favorite. Um, so this is picture number five. And this, this is, uh, this is the last one I auto generated. 
So let me know in the comments which one of you these. Oh, and I also I downloaded the stick the stick man one because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> So let me know in the comments which of these you think is the most interesting and I might change my profile picture to it. <laughs> and other than that, please do you know subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. I'm always playing around with these new state-of-the-art models. They're, they're always fun to work with. Thank you so much for watching though and I hope to catch you next time.